Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about inflammation. We will mainly discuss about acute inflammation in this video. So going to what is inflammation. In order to get rid of any damage or necrotic tissue or any microbial infection in the body, the body responds by inflammation. So inflammation is a complex reaction which takes place in the body which consists of response of blood vessels and WBCs so that it can get rid of any necrotic tissue, any microbial infection in the body. So going to the types of acute inflammation, uh, of inflammation, it is of two types. It is acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. So acute inflammation, it is uh, mainly rapid in onset. It will uh, last for a short duration, mainly for hours or few days. And what is chronic inflammation? Chronic inflammation is slower in onset. It will uh, result for longer duration. So, if the acute inflammation is successful to eliminate the main stimulus for infection and inflammation, it is okay. Otherwise, otherwise, it will go into chronic inflammation. So, chronic inflammation it can either follow acute inflammation or it can be insidious in onset. It can uh, be uh, chronic inflammation to begin with. And one thing very important to note is that acute inflammation, the main WBCs responsible are neutrophils. However, in case of chronic inflammation, these are lymphocytes and macrophages. Okay. Now going to what is uh, acute inflammation. Acute inflammation is a rapid host response that uh, mainly uh, has role to deliver WBCs and plasma proteins to the site of inflammation of tissue injury. Okay, so whenever we encounter any tissue injuries, example, this is the tissue injury. So acute inflammation will take place and acute inflammation, this has three parts. Firstly, this is, you can see this is the blood vessel. So the blood vessel, it dilates, okay, it dilates and then there is some structural changes in the blood vessel which will allow the plasma proteins and WBCs to exit from the blood vessel and then the WBCs, the WBCs, okay, the WBC which have exited the blood vessel, they will uh, uh, eliminate the any injurious agent, okay. So three major components which will be uh, in acute inflammation are Firstly, there is increase in the blood flow. There is certain alteration in the vascular caliber. There is vasodilation. Secondly, there is structural changes which will allow the uh, plasma proteins and leukocytes to leave the circulation. And so, lastly, there is immigration of the WBCs from the microcirculation and they will accumulate in the site of uh, injury and then they will activate to eliminate any offending agent over there. So these are the three main components. So firstly going to what does uh, stimulate the uh, acute inflammation, any infections like bacterial, viral, fungal, parasitic, any microbial infections, microbial toxins, they can cause acute inflammation. Secondly, tissue necrosis, in case of myocardial infarction, in case of any thermal injury, burns, you can find acute inflammation. Any foreign bodies can start acute inflammation. Also in hypersensitivity reactions, you can find acute inflammation. So these are all stimulus to uh, for the acute inflammation. Now going to firstly, you can see over here, try to understand this is the normal, uh, normal and this is the part where inflammation is taking place. Normally the blood vessels, uh, you can see over here, there is extracellular matrix over here. You can see there is occasional lymphocytes can be seen. Now what happens in inflammation? There is vasodilation. There is dilation over here. And there is exist, uh, the neutrophils, they are exiting the blood vessel. This is known as neutrophilic immigration. Then there is also leakage of the plasma proteins. Uh, which leads to edema. So what is edema? Edema is leakage of any fluid from the intravascular component into the extravascular component. Okay, so edema can be of two types. Okay, edema can be transudate and exudate. Okay, so transudate if only the fluid is lost, the fluid leaves the blood vessels and enters into the extracellular matrix. That is transudate. However, exudate if uh, there is leakage of plasma proteins and cells along with that is exudate. Okay, so in acute inflammation, you will always find exudate type of edema. Exude, uh, exudate type of edema. Now, going to the reaction of blood vessels. 
reaction of blood vessels already we have discussed the role of blood vessel is to maximize the movement of plasma proteins and wbcs out of the circulation into the site of tissue injury okay the blood vessels the main role is that only so uh, the main role of blood vessels is to create exudate they will uh, allow the escape of any fluid proteins and wbcs from the vascular system into the extra cellular extra cellular matrix okay now going to what will happen is firstly there will be first change which is seen is vasodilation vasodilation is the one of the earliest manifestations of acute inflammation this will result in increase in the blood flow to that area which will cause arrhythmia in the site of the inflammation the area of inflammation will be hot and red okay because of increase in the blood flow to that area so what the, what causes vasodilation many mediators like histamine mainly nitric oxide these will cause uh, vasodilation and then vasodilation is quickly followed by increased permeability of the microvasculature the microvasculature the, uh, there is increased permeability so that the wbcs and plasma proteins can leave that uh, blood vessel and can enter into the extracellular matrix now uh, increased uh, vascular permeability uh, which will lead to edema okay it uh, has many uh, ways by which the her vascular permeability will be increased so you can see this is wbcs you can see the plasma proteins over here the endothelial lining over here this is the blood vessel okay so blood vessels so what will happen is the uh, different different ways by which the plasma proteins and wbcs will enter over here into the extracellular matrix firstly there can be retraction of the endothelial cell the endothelial cell can retract and there is space formed over here okay and the wbcs can leave from here this is mainly mediated again by certain mediators like histamine nitric oxide and the retraction of endothelial cell it is a rapid process okay and is a short lived process okay so this is retraction of endothelial cell secondly some tish, uh, some injuries some microbes can directly lead to endothelial injury okay these uh, this can directly lead to injury so if their endothelial lining is injured then the plasma proteins and, and uh, wbcs will directly enter into the extracellular matrix okay this is caused by sometimes by any microbial toxins burns they can lead to endothelial injury then sometimes the leukocytes they can mediate the vascular injury uh, the uh, wbcs itself they can cause uh, injury to the endothelium and they can exit and lastly there is a process known as increased transcytosis where uh, the uh, plasma proteins they can uh, move through the cells there is increased transcytosis they will transverse the cell and they will exit the blood vessels and move into the extracellular matrix these are the ways by which it takes place so uh, firstly uh, we have already discussed there is retraction of the endothelial cell they will lead to increase in intraendothelial spaces this is the most common mechanism of vascular leakage and is mainly mediated by histamine uh, bradykinin leukotrienes this is uh, we have already discussed this secondly uh, there is endothelial injury these two mechanism they are the most important endothelial injury can be mediated both by wbcs wbcs can lead to endothelial injury and also the microbes direct can lead to endothelial injury okay by both mechanism only one thing will happen is the wbcs from the uh, intracellular uh, the intravascular component will move out and they will go to extravascular component and after uh, some time the repair will take place of uh, endothelium so this was all about uh, how the blood vessels will respond now when the wbcs have uh, moved out then the response of wbcs will start we will discuss the response of wbcs in the next video that is a long topic we will discuss in the next video uh, do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like this video thank you for watching